everybody, let's talk a little bit about oxoanions that have hydrogens attached to them. And so um, these are, these are um, polyatomic ions um, that typically have a charge that is greater than one. So something like maybe, let me make sure that I can do this. Let's see, like P O four three minus, what can happen is we can put a hydrogen on this. And remember, a hydrogen ion has a, an electron to, um, to want to do something with, or has a space for an electron to want to do something with. And so when we add a hydrogen in front of this, we also change its charge to 2 minus. So we add um, the hydrogen and 1 to the charge. Add one, meaning it goes up one, because remember this is negative, so going up. Okay, so the name of this is hydrogen followed by whatever the name of the polyatomic ion is. Okay, so this is going to be hydrogen phosphate. Okay, now I pick this polyatomic ion because if you have more than one hydrogen, which can only happen is if you have a charge that is three or three minus or greater, and you have to put a prefix in front of it. So something like H two P O um, four one minus because I added an, I added a hydrogen and added to the charge. Okay, that's this. So this is going to be dihydrogen phosphate. Okay, and that's very rare, but that happens when you have these phosphates and sometimes phosphites. Okay, now there's an old style of naming that uses the prefix by. If you have something that has a hydrogen on front of it, in front of it, you may hear bicarbonate. Okay, that is, that is a, it's, it's, it's so common that chemists have made that a, Kind of a normal systematic thing okay so let's go through and let's name some of these or let's and then let's come up with the formula of some of these um, so here we have so3 one minus so that is the sulfite ion and then with the hydrogen out front we're going to make this hydrogen, and it's two words there, but hydrogen sulfite. Okay. Now this we just named up here. Okay, but I'll go through it again. This part of it is the phosphate ion. Phosphate. And then because we have more than one hydrogen, we name this. This is the only time you'll see a prefix in a um, in ionic compounds so it's as long as you're using the systematic name dihydrogen phosphate that's the name of this okay now let's say we have a name bicarbonate ion okay well remember the bi means that it's got a hydrogen attached to it and carbonate co3 it's in, it's outside the box, 8 equals 3, so this is carbonate, CO3, 2 minus, but by adding the bi, we add 1 hydrogen, and we increase the charge by 1. Remember, it's negative, so increase means up, and so we go from negative 2 up to negative 1. Okay? Okay? And so now the hydrogen sulfate ion. Okay, well, the sulfate ion is SO42 minus. So the hydrogen sulfate ion is going to be HSO4. Again, raise the charge by 1. So that's what we do with hydrogen oxo anions. Okay, now there are five other polyatomic ions that you just need to memorize that are not considered oxoanions. Okay, they have oxygen in them. Most polyatomic ions do, 
but we don't name them using our um, oxo anion naming system. And so this is hydroxide, and this is cyanide, and this is ammonia, this is acetate, and this is oxalate. I would definitely um, try to memorize those and keep those in your head. So now let's put all of this stuff together. Okay, so here are um, polyatomic ions, um, naming them and coming up with formulas for them. And so let's see what we can do. It takes all this ionic naming stuff and do this. Okay, so this is going to be fun. So to do this, I separate the two parts of an ionic compound. Okay, I first want to check to make sure that it's ionic. Yes, metal, so I know that it's ionic. Okay, so now once I separate the two parts, remember any, any ionic compound is going to be just named the cation and named the anion. That can be tricky. I'm not saying that it's easy, but that's the pattern. So name this, this is sodium, sodium, and then this guy, that's a polyatomic ion, nitrate, or <laughs> nitrogen is outside the box, so eight is three, this has three, so this is sodium nitrate, okay? Now this guy, we're going to separate it here, and I recognize this as one of the ones that we've had to just memorize as ammonia. Okay, so this is um, not ammonia, but ammonium. This is ammonium. Did I write that correctly? This is ammonium. Wow, that's bad. Okay, this is ammonium, the ammonium ion. Okay, so that's ammonium. And it's not a transition metal, so we don't need anything here. And then we name this half. This is the chloride half. Okay. Okay, next, okay, name the two parts. This is iron. Now this again has to be the one that, this is one of those that we had to memorize. So this is iron cyanide, not a very pleasant compound. Okay, but now we need to figure out what the charge on iron is. Well, do we know what the charge on cyanide is? We do, because we memorized it. No easy way to do this, I'm sorry. But the charge on cyanide is 1 minus. So how many cyanides do we have? We have 3 of them, so that means this is 3. Iron, there's 1 iron, so that means the iron must have a charge of 3. Okay, so this is iron 3 cyanide. Okay, here we go. Vanadium vanadium and then this guy again has to be one of the ones that we memorize this is acetate okay so this is vanadium acetate but vanadium is a transition metal so we need to make sure we put the charge in parentheses there how do we figure out the charge? Well, we start with the side that we know, just like we have been. Acetate, again, I'm going to flash back here. Acetate has a charge of 1 minus. So this is 1 minus. There are 3 of them. So this is a total of 3. I split this, right? So we need 3 plus charges. There's one of these. So that means vanadium has to be a 3 plus. Okay. So now we have to write the formulas. Now this becomes a little bit easier, I think. Um, it may not be, okay? But here we go. Potassium. That's K. And I'm gonna. This is. I'm gonna show you how I do this. So I'm gonna write the formula with the ion, with the charge on the ion. And then oxalate is C2O4 two minus. Now, how many of each do we need? What is the least common multiple between one plus and two minus? because we want the charges to cancel out. So the least common multiple here is two. So how many oxalates do we need? Well, for this guy, we just need one of them. And for this guy, we need two. So the formula now is going to be K2, because we need two, and then C2O4. Now, we don't have to put the parentheses with just one, 
these things because if there's no value, we just assume that it's one. Okay, so it's going to be, um, let's see here, for this one, um, I'm going to get rid of all this stuff. For this, it's just going to be K to C to O four. Okay, so now tin four nitrite. Here's our two halves. So tin S N, and then that four tells us that it's four plus nitrite. Okay, nitrogen is outside the box. That means that three three oxygens is eight. Three is eight. And that's not going to work because this is eight. That means there's one less, so that's two. So this is NO2, and the charge on nitrogen oxoanions is one minus. So now, how many of each do we need? Well, what is the least common multiple between four plus and one minus? Again, we're doing this to make sure that the charges cancel and balance each other out. So this is four plus one minus, so this is going to be a charge of four, Sorry, the least common multiple of four. So how many tins do we need? One tin. And how many nitrate trites do we need? We need four of those. Okay, so now when we write this, okay, this is where it gets to be fun. We don't want to write it SNNO24, because if we do, it just looks like we have 24 oxygens. That's not right. What we want to do is we want to say that we have four of the nitrates in the parentheses okay so we put the parentheses here and that tells chemists to distribute the four throughout the polyatomic ion okay keep going here chromium so again this is our first ion chromium and then this tells us the charge six plus and then oxide that's not a polyatomic ion okay that's just o and that's two minus. Now here's a case where we don't, where um, doing it other ways will get you the wrong answer. That's why I always use the least common multiple method. Okay, what is the least common multiple between two and six? Well, that least common multiple is six. Okay, so that means how many chromiums do you need? One. How many oxygens do you need? three and so that means the formula for this is CrO3. Some people teach like a crisscross method or whatever okay that works most of the time this method will work all of the time. Okay so now oh, so for how easy this one may have been or how straightforward this one is this one's a little trickier. Okay so ammonium. Ammonium we can look up on the list is NH4 plus and then bisulfate. Okay, well, that's a crazy thing, but bisulfate. So we should start with sulfate. Okay, sulfur is inside the eight box, so that's SO4. And then this is two minus, but that prefix bi means that we're going to put a hydrogen here. And so we add the hydrogen and add a charge, so that's going to be H. That's going to be one minus. So this is going to be ammonium bisulfate. So now we look and we say, okay, what is the least common multiple between one plus and one minus? Well, that's one. So now I'm going to put this over here because I'm running out of room. So that means one of each. So it's going to be NH4 HSO4. And that is the formula for ammonium sulfate and that is why you may not see the hydrogens combined all together this the hydrogens are separated because this is one half of the ion and this is the other half of the ionic compound so it's really kind of neat when we get into this okay so there it is um, that's naming compounds or um, coming up with formulas for compounds um, that are uh, ionic. Uh, Going to be lots of practice and I make sure you know how to do this stuff. Okay, have a great day.